אני יכול להגיד לך איזה מצלמה, כאילו, אבל אני לא יודע איך אפשר... זה היה מחבל? כן. לא, מה את רוצה לעשות איתך? אתה רוצה לחפש את זה עם כמה פעמים דקה? לא, אני רוצה להגיד כמה פעמים אמרתי בצומת הזאת? לא, כולנו, תקענו את הארון, אין שם פעמים תקשורת. אפשר לראות שם מספרים. אתה יודע מה שאלו שם, נגיד? כן, אי אפשר לראות שם מספרים. כן. אפשר לברוח, נקרא הזוי. חבר'ה? אה? סקודה? רגלי? בתלם? איך אני אראה אותה? אני לא יכול לקרוא אותה, זה מקליט, אני לא רואה. זה מקליט. אוקיי, בוא נתחיל מזה, אז אני לא יכול לצאת בכל מקרה. דבר שני, אמא שלך רוצה לגור בישראל, מה אני אעשה? כן. מה אתה אומר על הרצח שהיה כאן? למה? אוקיי. מה אני אומר על הרצח שהיה כאן? הורגים אחד את השני, יהודים וערבים כל הזמן, אתם לא רואים את זה? וכאילו, תסתכלו על הסיטואציה שאנחנו נמצאים פה באמת. אוקיי. around the 22nd day. עם ישראל מנסה לחיות בארץ ישראל. the month of Shvat, 5778. It's not easy standing here 36 hours ago, 36 hours ago, right at this spot, right at this spot, a neighbor of ours, a Jew, a fellow Jew, fellow Jew, right at this spot over here. Where the rocks are, I advise, Mike, if you could put on the video also attached to it, what the cameras picked up. You could add it to the uh, add it to the video. Today's subject, unfortunately, it's not our, it's not what we planned. And in the last month or so, there's too many of these classes that are unplanned. We're right now in the intersection of Ariel. 36 hours ago, a Jew, Rabbi Itamar Ben Gal, was stabbed here in the middle of the afternoon. Unbelievable. Middle of the afternoon. An Arab gets off on the other side of the street. Nonchalantly crosses over the street like no problem, no sweat. Crosses over the street and takes, you know, two or three steps and murders Rabbi Itamar from the settlement of, of Mount Bracha, the Mountain of the Blessing. We are less than a month. We had a class less than a month about the murder of Rabbi Raziel Sheva. May God avenge his blood. Less than a month ago. I hate to say this, who knows where the next class will be, who knows which intersection will have to film the next class till we wake up. Rabbi, Rabbi Ariel was married, 29 years old, a wife, a widow now, four orphans joins the list of Rabbi Raziel, or a widow, six orphans. He joins two weeks ago, right around here, in the settlement of Shavei Shomron, the Lipker family, an Arab driving, driving wildly in the rain, the roads extremely dangerous, wet, Speeding, he just spins around, takes fewer spins, goes right into the car of the Lipker family, kills two kids, four are injured. Parents and two other kids are injured. What's the connection? We're talking about Jews that were gunned down. There is a connection, we'll get to that soon. It seems like it was a traffic accident, right? Let's, we'll get to that soon. If you remember the last class we had in part one of another Jew murdered in the Shomron. Yeah, this is take two. 
Killing me softly. Killing me softly. If you remember in the first class, we talked about the problem. The head of the council of the Shomron, the Shomron municipality, they told us the problem was with Rabbi Raziel Shevach that there were no security cameras. Mike, I don't know if we could get this, but if we look up, if we look up right over here, we see three cameras over here. Across the street, we have at least another two, and if we go across the next street, we'll find some more. So thank God we're not lacking in the security cameras. And we were told three weeks ago that Rabbi Raziel could have been saved if there were security cameras, as if the problem is more cameras. Five, six cameras here. You could look it up on the internet and you'll see a very, very top-notch, beautiful picture of Rabbi Ariel. You could see Rabbi Ariel, it's in color and it's, you know, clear as there's unbelievable cameras. High-tech here. Tremendous high-tech. That did not stop an Arab of 19 years old just nonchalantly walking across the street and stabbing to death Rabbi Itamar Bengal. Security cameras are not our problem. The enemy, the Arab enemy, is the problem, not security cameras. In this week's portion, I see in at least seven or eight places, I see Rabbi Itamar, I see Rabbi Raziel, I see the Lipker family of Shabbat Shomron, I see them in, our, in this week's portion. We know what happens during the week. We could find it in, in the portion of the week. So let me bring up some points and we'll go over a couple of them. Number one, we are told in this week's portion, Mishpatim, we are told about four major, four major cardinal types of disasters, of the damages, of injury. Think about that. Four major cardinal types of damage and injury that is done to a person. Number two, in this week's portion, we find the laws of guards. Laws of Jewish guards. You could see, you could see over here, there are many of them all of the sudden. Many of them all of the sudden. When Rabbi Itamar was here, none of them were around. But now there are many, as if right today they're going to come back at the same place, the same bad time, the same bad channel. They're going to come back. Number three, we read in this week's portion. The cries of the orphans, the cries of the widows, amazing. The widow of Rabbi Ariel, the widow of Rabbi Raziel, the orphans of the Lipker family in Shavei Shomron, and the list goes on and on and on, and there is no end. There is no end. Number four, chasing away Eliminating the enemy, expelling the enemy slowly. We're talking about number four, chasing away, eliminating the enemy, expelling the enemy slowly. We're talking about, we're talking about 3,330 some years. God says, you have to wait till the land of Israel is built up. In order to expel the enemy, you have to wait till the land of Israel is built up. Well, folks, we'll soon read to you various statistics how built up the land of Israel. Israel is a powerhouse. Today, 2018, according to the Gentiles, unbelievable. 
the success, the power, prestige of the land of Israel. The time has come. Number five. In this week's portion, we see the importance of expelling evil from our midst. Expelling evil from our midst. That's number five. Number six. In this week's portion, God commands Moses to take an animal, a sacrifice, and to split the blood of the animal into two basins. One basin will be sprinkled upon the Jewish people, and one basin will be sprinkled upon the altar. The Balei Tosfot say, what's going on over here with the blood being sprinkled on the Jewish people? And the Tosfot, a thousand years ago, they say an unbelievable line. What is this? What is this ceremony of sprinkling of the blood? And they write there, unbelievable prophecy. This is the blood of Jews that are murdered by non-Jews. In this week's portion, Moses sprinkles, takes a sacrifice. Instead of having animal sacrifices, you get it? The Tosfot will teach us when we're not on the right, we're not on the proper direction, when we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Instead of animal sacrifices, we have human sacrifices. People that are murdered by non-Jews. This week's portion, check it out. Number seven. In this week's portion, we see that under, so to speak, under the throne of heaven, there is something called Livnata Sapir. That means a sapphire, sapphire brick. That's a little bit unusual. Usually bricks are cheap, nothing, you know, made out of cement. Sapphire is a very, very precious uh, rock. What is the combination? Number eight, this week begins a new period in the Jewish calendar. This week begins the period of the four portions that we week, that we read. Starting from this Shabbat, Shkalim. In two weeks, Zachor, to remember what Amalek did to the Jewish people. After that, we have the portion of Para, the, the calf, the red heifer. And after that, the portion of the new month, Parshat HaChodesh. Let's review some of these. We spoke, number one thing that we mentioned, we spoke about the four cardinal types of damage, injury that could happen to a person. The Torah teaches us that these are these four cardinal types of injuries, of damage, of destruction, are connected to the four exiles. The fourth exile being the exile of Yishmael that we are presently in. Sorry to interrupt you. Thank you. Is it possible to ask a few questions and then you can continue? Thank you. Sorry for the interrupt. Toda. Bo, bo, chef, po. Ata me a chavurazot, nahon, shel a kalbanim. Stasbir la numaze. Ma rayon shelachem. Shmirat matim. Masha sipata li. Bikashti menole da kashta in la tso. Nahposhut havim in soa. Okay. <clears throat> the seventh, the eighth issue we spoke is that the connection this week begins the four portions of the week that we read between, uh, I guess you could call it the beginning of Adar and the beginning of Nisan or between Purim and uh, a little bit before Passover. 
let's go back to a few of these issues. We talked about the four cardinal damages, injuries, destruction. These are connected by our sages to the exiles. And according to the Ramba, Maimonides, the worst one, believe it or not, is the, is the exile of Islam, which is the final exile. It's, a, it's their exile. Now think about this. You think about what do I have to do with these cardinal injury, with, with these destructive forces. I'm a nice person. But our sages tell us an amazing thing, that every person inside of them has these four destructive forces within them. In fact, when God created the world, when God created the world, after he created the entire, uh, the animals and the, the sun and the moon, etc., and the water and the ocean, he brings the animals. Why are you bringing the animals? And our sages tell us an amazing thing, that within every human being, <coughs> There are all the animal kingdom within them, with all, within a, all of us. We have a lion. Within all of us, there is a bear. Within of all of us, there is a snake. Is that good or bad? It ain't good, and it's not bad. It depends how we use everything. But think about this. Why am I bringing this up? That these four cardinal forces of destruction are within us. But think about this one. When the Torah tells us about about Ishmael, the founder of Islam. He tells us that he is half a wild beast and a half a, half a wild person. This is an amazing thing. A regular Jew has within them a zoo, we could say, all kinds of forces of the animal kingdom. That's true. But think about the Islam, think about Ishmael. Their creation is already, he's a half wild beast within his creation. We haven't talked about the zoo yet. So we could understand what we see when we turn on our, our TVs or on our computers and we see what's going on in the world with the cruelty of the Islam world. We understand now. Because they begin as a wild, half wild animal and a half human, wild human being. Second point we mentioned in this week's portion, we talk about all the types of guards. And let me tell you something. If a person is responsible for a class, you have a principal in a school. If something happens to a student, I want to know who is responsible. Who do you go to? Of course you go to the teachers who are responsible. But for the teachers you have, you have the principal of the school. And I want to ask a question here. If you're a guard, if you're in the army, if you're in the police, what exactly is your job? Your job is to, fit, to defend the Jewish people. Your job is to defend the Jewish people. If you're able to do that, more power to you. You have the blessings. If you're not able to defend the Jewish people, leave. Get the hell out of here. Because there's a lot of people. There's a lot of great Jews here that are scholar warriors. They are deep, intense in Torah, but they are also deep within the army. They know how to fight. They've been trained over the years. Think about this. Your job, your responsibility is to defend Jews. So I'm asking a question. How in the hell, how in the hell, at this, this uh, traffic circle that we're standing at, let me tell you a little bit of history. Most people don't remember what happened yesterday, but I'll tell you a little bit of history about where you are, folks. Because right where we are, there's blood of Jews all over this intersection here. There's blood all over the place. Right 
50 feet from us, there's another bus stop, 50 feet away from here. A, in, a resident of Elon Moret, Ilana Brook, she was waiting for a bus at 50 feet away from here. And an Arab with explosives came and blew her up. Thank God she's still around today to tell the story. Of course, she is, she is terribly injured and she is handicapped. That was right over there. And let me tell you about another inhabitant of Elon Moret across the street. A boy named Erez Hershkovitz. Who the hell remembers Erez Hershkovitz? Nobody. But there was a there was a a teenager. His name was Erez Hershkovitz, and he was standing on the other side. And an Arab came and blew him up also. So what in the world is going on over here? A Jew is standing right over here. You don't have to be, you don't have to be the defense minister. You don't have to do 30 years in the army to get it. There are hundreds of Jews daily that stand right here. And that hitch, where the hell are the people that are supposed to be defending the Jews? Where the hell were they? In the middle of the afternoon, nonchalantly crossing over the street. What is going on here? Those that are head of security, those that are responsible, so-called responsible. Let me tell you another thing. We mentioned at the beginning of the class how two weeks ago, a family from the settlement of Shavei Shomron 15 minutes away from here, 20 minutes away from here. They were traveling with the family and a wild Arab driver. Skids, it's raining. Slow down, no, not for them. By them, everything, everything is from God. We could be reckless. Everything, it doesn't, Nothing depends on our being careful. Nothing depends on us. Whatever happens, happens. Kulo min Allah. Everything's from God. This wild animal skids around and rams into the car of the Lipker family, killing two kids, injuring four, the parents and other kids. Let me tell you something. Listen to this one. The people that are responsible for the roads, for the security of Jews driving here. Let me tell you this fact. The area of the Shomron is 2,800 square kilometers. 2,800 square kilometers. There are in this area 800,000 residents, Arabs and Jews, 800,000. For all these residents and for this entire area, 2,800 square kilometer, uh, kilometers, there are 12 traffic officers. Got that joke? 12. Just last week. And I could tell you a million stories. I'm just going last week. I'm driving to Jerusalem. Three times I was almost in an accident. Arabs coming out of nowhere, passing where you're not allowed to pass on a straight on a straight line, passing on curves. You can't see, it's a blind curve. You don't know what's flying there. Endangering everybody. This is just last week. This happens all the time. This happens all the time. Rabbi Itamar, who was murdered here, he, the principal of his school that he teaches, he came here to visit. Actually, he came here not to visit. He came here to pay a condolence call to the Shevach family, who the Rabbi Raziel was murdered 28 days ago. But who remembers that small incident? So it, Rabbi Itamar says, let me drive. Why? The, 
the principal of the school doesn't know how to drive? No, you're not from here. You don't know how to drive here. You got to be on the lookout. You got to be on the defense. You have to have your eyes, a million eyes around. Let me take over the wheel. Let's compare it. Petach Tikva. An Israeli town. It is, it is 40 square kilometers compared to 2,800 in the Shamron. There are 250,000 inhabitants, residents in Petach Tikva. There are 14 traffic police officers in Petach Tikva. You have two more than in the Shomron. Who is responsible? Who is responsible? Every year, the amount of Jews that are injured, maimed, crippled for life, murdered on the roads here by the Arab wild animals. Who's responsible for this? Let them go if they're not able to do the job. Let them go home. Can you imagine this? Do you understand what is happening in this country? You have different laws for different people. You have different strokes for different folks. The peoples in Judea and Samaria, the people in Judea and Samaria, they've been left to the dogs. They've been left to the dogs. So in this week's portion, we cry out and talk about real Jewish guards. What's the law of real Jewish guards? Next, it says that we must expel the inhabitants from the Jewish land. One might say, one might say that we're talking about the seven Canaanite nations. But listen to this, a Jewish law authority called the Sefer Yireim, Rav Eliezer of Metz, in his Jewish law book, in the commandment 316, listen to the words that he writes. On this week's portion, that they shall not dwell in your country. Listen to what he writes. God understands the inclinations of people. God understands the thoughts the inclinations of people. And therefore, because we understand who we're dealing with here, the inhabitants, the hostilities, the hate, the education. Just a few minutes ago, we had people from Finland asking me for forgiveness for the funding of Finland that goes to the Arabs to their hate machine. So it says here, it says here that when the Jewish when the Jewish are, when the Jewish people are strong, when the Jewish people are strong, we are not allowed to, uh, we are not allowed to uh, live in the land of Israel. Wicked people, or people that bring us to sin, in the land of Israel. And even though one might say that this is talking about only the seven nations, and that was a long time ago, it has no application today. So the Yireim comes by and he tells us not so. He says not so to teach us that this verse, this verse is talking about all those that are either wicked or people that are trying to cause the Jewish people to sin, all those that are wicked. Anybody that believes, anybody believes that this, the land of Israel belongs to them, belongs to the Islam, any Arab that believes it, he could be the nicest person in the world, he is a wicked person. Why? Because one of the seven commandments of Noah is that you are not allowed to steal. And those that believe that the Jewish people are robbers and they want to take back 
the land of Israel. They might be the nicest people. They might sit in their houses quietly, but they're waiting for the day. They're supporting. They're encouraging. They are waiting for the revolution. They're waiting for it to change around. These are, according to Torah law, evil people. They must be expelled in this week's portion. Amazing. Just amazing. Next. Point number six. How long have you been uh, doing this here? A long time. What? Listen to this, folks. This is really an amazing, an amazing piece. 200 years ago or so, there was one of the leading Hasidic rebbe's. His name was Rav Yuda Esh, Rav Yoshua Eshel, the, the Rebbe of Afta. And he says an unbelievable piece. Remember this all your life. He says an amazing piece on this week's portion. It's at the end. Many people by that time have maybe fallen asleep. It's at the sixth, sixth Aliyah, sixth part of the portion that we read. It says there that Moshe sacrificed animals. He took the blood and he split into two basins. Actually, he began the process and then an angel came by and did it precisely, half and half. Half Moses split, uh, uh, half Moses uh, spills on the altar and half he spills towards the Jewish people. There was a miracle and the blood reached all the people. What's going on over here? So the holy, the holy after Rebbe says, listen to this. And he says it, Kivyachol, Kivyachol. As if, as if. In this week's portion, there is a covenant. In this week's portion between God and the Jewish people. Listen to what he says. He says, God, as if, it, as if we could say it, God condensed himself, so to speak, half. And the other half is the Jewish people. And then they take the blood and they make a covenant. Why? And the Rebbe of Afta says an unbelievable Torah. He quotes the Abar Vanel in his book, Matzumir Hishuot. He says, if there was an ancient custom for hundreds of years that when two kings wanted to make a covenant, an agreement between them, they would sit down with wine. And before they drank the wine, they would make a prick in their one of their fingers and put one drop of blood in the wine and then mix them. If you ever heard Blood Brothers... What? Oh. Indians. So the after Rebbe says an unbelievable thing. is as if God, in a tremendous act of, of humility, He condenses, so to speak, himself half and his other half is the Jewish people and in this week's in this week's portion they make a covenant the covenant of blood what does it mean he asks it means that when the kings do it if you're attacked it's as if I'm attacked and if they attack you it's as if I'm attacked if somebody attacks the Jewish people, they are attacking the God of Israel. And if someone attacks the God of Israel, they are attacking the Jewish people. And the after Rebbe goes on and explains, that's why, folks, in this week's portion, we, le we learn that it's always the portion of the half shekel. Why half? Why give half? So the Alter Rebbe says, why half? Because half 
is given by God and half is given by the Jewish people. That's the special idea in this week. That's the special time that we're dealing with. It's a special time of the year that comes around and we're saying, God, it's you and us, half and, and us half, that makes an entire whole. And that's why he says that the Jewish courts would sit in a half circle. Why in a half circle? Because God is the other half of the circle. When the Jewish people, when we're on the mark, when we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, then we are one with God. So why am I bringing this up? For many reasons, tremendous understanding to get it. When we come, when we come this Purim and we give that half a shekel, understand what we're doing here. We're staying, we are a half and God's the other half. Amazing, amazing. That's a responsibility. And in this land, we are desecrating over and over and over again, God's name. Our other half. Two more points before we call it a day. Hopefully we'll continue. Two more points. It says towards the end of the portion that underneath the throne of God there is a brick of sapphire. What does that mean? The Tosfo tells us in this week's portion. Listen to this closely and remember it all your life. What is this brick? A brick is something cheap and sapphire is, is tremendously expensive. It's a precious rock. So he tells the following story. In the beginning of the slavery in Egypt, there was a pregnant woman and her husband that were working slave labor. And she had a miscarriage right there. And the baby, uh, the placenta of the baby fell out and it mixed into the cement. God took the cement and the placenta and he put it under his throne to remember, to remember the pain of the Jewish people. But listen to this. Eventually, the Jewish people arrive at the sea. The Egyptians are chasing them. There's no way out. And the angels of Egypt come up to God and say, listen, why are you going to save the Jewish people and drown the Egyptians? They're both sinners. There's no advantage to either side. They're the same. And God pulls out that brick, that sapphire brick. And he says, remember what you did. Remember what your people did to the Jewish people. And he drowned the Egyptians. How long does that last for? Listen to this. We're not finished. This was continuously by God's throne until it came time where the Jewish people, because of our sins, we merited, quote unquote, in destroying the temple. When God saw that we were destroying with our actions, we were destroying our holiness, our specialness, our uniqueness. When he saw this, he took that brick sapphire and it says in the verse that he threw it down and he did not remember. When we look around what's happening in this country, that will be our next class. We'll talk about what's going on in Israel. How we're stepping on the Torah. We're stepping and desecrating the Torah. We're forcing, so to speak, God's hand to take these precious souls like Rabbi Itamar 
and Rabbi Raziel and the Lipker family and the list goes on and on and on and we're forcing God's hand because of all the tr all the terrible things that we are doing I'll just give one example and we'll end with that according to the Bureau of Central Statistics in Israel there are 400,000 Jews that work on the Sabbath 400,000 Jews that work on the Sabbath there are 92,000 Jews that work only on the Sabbath the first 400,000 okay they work they work also it could be just on the Sabbath the 92,000 they work seven days a week 92,000 people Jews in Israel work seven days a week 400,000 desecrate the Sabbath and we know one of the things that leads us to being exiled from the land of Israel is the Sabbath so when we step on the Holy Sabbath when we understand that God is half so to speak and we're the other half and we have this covenant we have this blood covenant when we're attacked it's as if God is being attacked and that's what's happening here in the land of Israel there is an attack on the God of Israel next week with God's help we will continue oh you have this every week